I got some new stuff in this one for you guys, so make sure you're paying close attention, but let's just get straight into the Season 5 settings. As always, we're going to be starting with the Windows settings, so starting with Background Apps, if you just go down to your search bar, and we're going to type in Background Apps, and you're going to see it right here at the top, we're just going to click on that, and once this loads up, just check this little box here, turning it off, where it says let apps run in the background. We do not want all this stuff running in the background, because that can negatively impact performance, and obviously we don't want that. Once you're done with that, we're going to actually open up Google Chrome. So this only applies to people who use Google Chrome. If you don't use Google Chrome, just completely ignore this step. But in the top right hand corner here, you're going to see three little dots. So just click on that and then click on settings from there. Once it loads up, just scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see it say advanced right here. So just click that and then we keep scrolling all the way down until you see system and you're going to want to uncheck this box where it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. For some reason, even when you turn off background apps on the PC, Google Chrome will continue to run in the background even when it's closed. It'll actually run a lot of different tasks in the task manager and we, we just don't want that because again, that's going to negatively impact performance. And Google Chrome, for whatever reason, always uses up a lot of resources. So Google Chrome especially, we don't want running in the background. Once we're done with that, we are going to go back to the search bar on the bottom left and we're just gonna type in power and you're gonna see power and sleep settings right here so click on that and it'll bring up this menu here and from this menu you're going to see additional power settings on the right hand side so click that and you might have this option hidden under a little drop down menu so you might have to click this little arrow but you're going to want to use high performance or some variation of high performance some people might have different options but you want to use a high performance mode here then we can click out of all of that and we're actually going to open up our folders here and we are going to go to our documents so just click on your documents here and this is where modern warfare should be installed so click call of duty modern warfare if you don't see it here just find your call of duty modern warfare file so we're going to click that go into players and then you're going to see this adv underscore options dot nii file so you're going to double click that and it's going to open this up here so once this is opened your renderer worker count you're going to want to change this number to four and once you're done doing that make sure you click file and then save and then you can close out of that that should actually help boost your performance and then for the last windows settings we're going to go back down into the bottom left hand corner for the search bar and we're going to type in game and you'll see game mode settings so we're going to click that right there and the first thing you're going to want to do from here is go up to this xbox game bar and make sure it's checked off right here at the top and then after you're done with that we can go back into where it says game mode right here and we're going to actually want to turn game mode on then on the right side you're going to see it says graphic settings right here so click on that and not everyone's going to have this option but if you do have this option just check this on where it says hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This is going to give you a slight performance boost, but I do know some people have experienced some stutters and stuff like that in their game when they turn this on. So if that does happen to you after changing this, just come back in here and turn it off. But after you do change the setting, you will have to restart your PC. So once we're done with all the settings in this video, just make sure that you're restarting your PC. Then we're going to move on to the NVIDIA control panel. If you don't know how to open the NVIDIA control panel, just right click your desktop and then click on NVIDIA. NVIDIA control panel. If you don't have that option, you probably don't have graphics drivers installed. So you should probably go install your graphics drivers. Or if you don't see that option, you might have an AMD GPU as well, if you don't know that already. But starting at the top here, we got adjust image settings with preview. All you have to do in here is check this middle box where it says use the advanced 3D image settings. And then from there, we're going to click on manage 3D settings here on the left side. And I'm just going to scroll through all of these again, like I usually do just for you guys to copy. These are currently the best control panel settings that you can be using in any game, really. I'll scroll through there one more time for you guys. I know I went through that kind of quick, but make sure you get all these settings copied down. And then after that, we're going to go over on the left side and we're going to click change resolution. And from here, you're going to want to make sure you're on your native resolution. And it should be under the PC thing right here where it says PC, because if you scroll up here, you're going to see Ultra HD and all that. And if you select one of those, it's not going to let you change your refresh rate to your actual refresh rate of your monitor you're probably going to be locked to 60 hertz and we don't want that so make sure you have it selected here under pc and then on the right side here you're going to select the highest refresh rate possible for your monitor and make sure you are doing this with all your monitors so just go through here and change this with 
every single monitor that you might be using at your setup. And then we're going to be scrolling down and you're going to want to change from use default color settings to use Nvidia color settings. Make sure desktop color depth is at the highest. Output color depth, most of you guys are going to have this at 8 BPC, but if you have an option for a higher number here, definitely select that. And then for our output dynamic range, make sure this is set to full. And again, make sure you are doing this with every single monitor that you have hooked up to your PC. Then make sure you are always applying your changes after you're done with each tab here. Next, we're going to be moving on to adjust desktop color settings. And the only thing you need to do here, you don't really need to do it. It's kind of a personal preference thing, but it's messing with this digital vibrance. Personally, I don't like messing with it because my monitor is already insanely oversaturated and super colorful. But if you're noticing your game is like a little washed out and you want to make the colors pop a little more, you can just drag this slider up to whatever looks best to you. See the difference here when we drag it up to 100, how much more colorful it looks. And then if I drag it back down to 50, it looks a lot more washed out compared to when it was at 100. So you can just see the difference there. So if you feel like your games are looking a little washed out, just try messing with that setting and getting whatever best looks for your monitor. From there, we're going to be moving on to adjust desktop size and position on the left side here. And for each of your monitors here, again, make sure you are doing this for every monitor. You're going to want to select scaling to no scaling right here. And then you can scroll down and make sure you have the correct resolution and refresh rate for each of your monitors again down here. And then the last thing we're going to do in the NVIDIA control panel is we're going to go down to adjust video color settings. And from here, we're going to want to select with NVIDIA settings instead of with the video player settings. And you're going to want to go to advanced and make sure the dynamic range is changed from full. It's probably going to be unlimited by default. Again, make sure you're doing this with every single monitor hooked up to your PC and apply your changes. And we're all done in the NVIDIA control panel. I should probably also note that every time you update your graphics card drivers, your NVIDIA control panel settings are going to be reset. So make sure you guys are always keeping up to date on that. And I should probably note that changing your Windows settings and your in-game settings can only take your PC so far. And if you truly want to get the full potential out of your PC, you're going to have to overclock your system. And I actually tested out one of those PC optimization companies that custom overclocks and optimizes your system for you. I benchmarked the results before and after, and we did a video on it, which I'll link in the description, and I was just blown away by the results. So if you want to get the most out of your PC, I would highly, highly recommend them. It's not cheap, but I mean, if you're spending two, three thousand dollars on your PC, why not spend the extra couple hundred dollars and get your system fully optimized and get your PC running to its fullest capabilities? If you guys are interested in something like that, I'll link their website down in the description, and you can also use code WEBSYS for 20% off anything on their website, which is super nice. But let's just get right into the in-game settings. Starting with display mode, as always, playing full screen, you're getting the least amount of input lag possible on full screen. I know a lot of people like to tab out of their game a lot, so they'll put on full screen borderless, but playing with full screen borderless on, you're getting added input lag, and we don't want that at all. For display monitor, just make sure your right monitor is selected already, obviously. I mean, it should be already. And then display adapter, make sure you have your graphics card selected here, and then make sure you have your screen refresh rate selected correctly here. For render resolution, make sure this is at 100. For those of you playing at 1080p with a 3080 or a 3090, you could actually bump this up to 121 and get pretty much no performance loss and your game is going to look incredibly more clear. So I would definitely recommend testing that out if you have a 3080 or a 3090 and you're playing on 1080p. But for everyone else, just put this down to 100. For aspect ratio, we have this at automatic. V-Sync, we want this disabled. Again, V-Sync is adding input lag and we don't want input put lag at all in a first person shooter. I do know that it gets rid of screen tearing, but honestly, I would rather deal with a little screen tearing if I have that issue over getting the extra input lag from having V-Sync on. But if screen tearing really, really bothers you and you don't care about it adding a little input lag, you could turn this on, but I really recommend against it. For custom frame rate limit, I have this on custom and then I click the advanced tab here and for gameplay custom frame rate limit, I have this all the way up to 300. So my PC is just running the the game at as many frames as possible and then for menu custom frame rate limit i have this set 60 so when i'm in the menus here my gpu is not just going overboard and just over 
were working for no reason at all and then out of focus custom frame rate limit i mean this doesn't matter at all but i have it at 30. this will only matter if you're tabbed out of your game but then we scroll down here and we got nvidia highlights which i would highly recommend disabling otherwise it's just going to be recording all the little double kills and stuff you get but you can still use the shadow play to record your clips while having this disabled so don't worry about that if you do use shadow play to record your clips nvidia reflex low latency i now have this only at enabled instead of enabled plus boost i've noticed some performance issues when it's on enabled plus boost so i would just keep this on enabled display gamma most of you guys are going to have this at 2.2 srgb if you are playing like on a computer monitor but if you're playing on a tv you could switch this over to 2.4 so just have this setting chosen correctly for whatever kind of display you're playing on now scrolling down to the rest of the settings here i'm going to be giving you guys a lot of different options depending on how you want your game to look and run first thing i want you to do is look up here in the top right hand corner where it says vram usage and make sure whatever settings you're putting on are not going above this line right here that says max because that is going to make your game run like complete crap and we do not want that the biggest culprit of that is going to be texture resolution as you can see that bar moves down a lot when i turn the setting down and then when i turn the setting up you can see it go up a lot but we're going to start with streaming quality here and i have this on low currently i've been experimenting with it on low and normal i have noticed the game does look a little bit worse with the streaming quality on low so i'm going to be putting this on normal but keep in mind if you do have less than four gigabytes of vram you're going to want to keep this on low and if you don't know how many gigabytes of vram you have you can actually see that up here in the top right 4000 would equal four gigabytes so if you have less than 4000 here on the second number then i would put this on low or if you just want to squeeze the maximum amount of fps you can out of your pc then just throw it on low but like i said it looks a little bit worse so i'm keeping this on normal for texture resolution again i have this on normal i have noticed when i go to low or very low the textures just look very like muddy and it just gives the game a really nasty look and i don't like that and the difference going from very low to normal on this setting is very negligible so i would recommend putting this on normal but again if you don't have the vram to support putting this on normal i would put it on low the difference between low and very low is not very much at all so i would just keep it on low and i haven't even noticed a difference switching this from normal to high the game literally looks the same but it just uses a lot more performance so i would just recommend keeping this on normal for texture filter and isotropic i have this on normal again for the same reason that i'm keeping texture resolution on normal particle quality is actually supposed to be on high i don't know how this got changed here but particle quality on high actually improves your performance in the game so definitely keep particle quality on high bullet impacts and sprays is supposed to be enabled as well i'm not sure why that was disabled again it's probably from when i was doing benchmarks on the lowest possible settings and then tessellation i do have this disabled if you want your game to look a little bit better and just kind of pop more you can put this on all but i want to squeeze more fps out of my system so i'm keeping this disabled on demand texture streaming we want this disabled we do not want the game downloading stuff to our hard drive while we're playing the game shadow map resolution i have this on low shadow map resolution is a big hog when it comes to your frame rate so i really recommend putting this on low if you do not like how low looks and you're not all about getting the maximum amount of frames as you possibly can you could put this on normal but anything above normal it's not going to really look much different cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows keep these both enabled particle lighting we have this on low ray tracing is another huge performance hog and i highly recommend keeping this disabled if you have the option not everyone's going to have the ray tracing option but if you do just don't even enable it unless you want to be playing at like 50 fps ambient occlusion is one i have disabled but it's another one of those settings that can really like make things in the game pop i've noticed i lose about 5 to 10 fps when i put this all the way up to both but it does make everything in the game kind of like pop out a little bit more so if you want your game to look a little better and you don't care as much about the frames i would put this on both but like i said in my testing i was losing like 5 to 10 fps with this on both so i would put this on disabled if you're only looking to get the max amount of frame rate screen space reflection we have disabled and then we have a lot to go over down here we'll come back to filmic strength later but we're gonna start with dlss here now i would only use dlss if you're playing at 1440p or at 4k if you're playing at 1080p just completely ignore this setting and leave it disabled now you might have to test this setting out a little bit for yourself because in my experience on my setup i was getting no difference in performance with dlss on or off but then again on my other pc that i test 
this on, I was getting a pretty significant boost to my frame. So like I said, you're going to have to test this out for yourself. So if you're playing at 1440p, I would recommend putting this at the quality setting. I wouldn't even mess with any other settings. It's just going to look like hot garbage. Hop into a game, look at your FPS and see if it's higher than normal. If it is, then leave it on. If you're playing at 4K, I would put this at the balanced option and do the same thing. If you're at 4K, just hop into a game, see if your FPS is higher. And if it is, then leave it on. If it's not any higher at all, then you can just leave it disabled. For anti-aliasing, I personally leave this off because anti-aliasing is another big hog to performance. So it's going to be lowering your FPS quite a bit if you put this option up. But anti-aliasing really, really affects how the game looks. So I'll put a couple of images up on screen here so you guys can see the difference. On the left, we have anti-aliasing off. And you can notice like all the jagged edges in the game and the shimmering kind of in the trees. And then on the right side, we have anti-aliasing turned all the way up. And you can see the shimmering in the trees is gone and the jagged edges are gone and it just looks overall a lot better. So if you don't mind the performance loss and you want to use anti-aliasing, I would just recommend using the Filmic SMAAT2X. The other settings don't do as good of a job as the highest settings and it's not really worth using the 1X or the T2X right here because the performance loss you're going to be getting compared to how the image quality looks, it's not really worth it. So if you're just going to use anti-aliasing, I would go all out and use the highest setting. Now, if you do have anti-aliasing off, make sure this filmic strength option is turned all the way up. And if you have anti-aliasing turned all the way up, make sure this filmic strength option is turned all the way down. Getting this filmic strength setting set correctly will help avoid visual noise issues. So make sure you have that set correctly. And then for depth of field, we're gonna have this disabled. We do not want that. And then the motion blur options have both of these disabled. Motion blur is just going to make visibility terrible when you're moving around the map and looking around in game just disable these along with film grain we do not want any extra added effects to the game that's gonna just make visibility worse as well and then dynamic resolution don't even mess with this keep this disabled and then that's it for all the graphic settings make sure you are applying your changes to your graphic settings once you're done and then i just want to go over the audio settings here so i did do a video testing out all the different audio settings so audio settings are not a one size fits all so you might want to watch that video which i'll link down in the description for you guys to help you decide which audio setting is best for you because what sounds really good and what's going to make it easier to hear footsteps in my headphones could be completely different in your headphones so i would recommend watching that video and listening to it all for yourself on your setup and see what sounds the best for you but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the video if it did help you out please consider subscribing we're almost at 30,000 subscribers which is just crazy to me so i'd really appreciate that and drop a like on the video i'd really appreciate that as well and just a reminder i do stream a lot over on twitch link is also in the description but i'll see you guys in the next video here's the web peace